Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Matchbook series on the EBPL podcast. My name is Paul. I will be your host. I'm the adult services librarian here at EBPL. On the Matchbook podcast, we like to dish out personalized recommendations for book recommendations, book genres you might be interested in, subgenres. Sometimes we get really specific, sometimes it's really broad. People throw questions at me that I wasn't expecting, and I like delving into that because then it's something new and fresh for not just me, but often for the listeners as well. If you are unaware of how we do this, I pull suggestions from our matchbook form, which is where you could submit requests for recommendations. That's in our website. It is under the Explore tab and then under the Adult Reading subheading. So you could submit pretty much any type of request you'd like, and I'll get back to you with a uh, personalized list of books that you might be interested in. Sometimes I'll deal with multiple questions in an episode, sometimes just one, and something somebody sent in really, you know, scratched an itch with me, and I really like the question, and it concerns books that are set in New Jersey. I mean, I'm from New Jersey. I probably just by accident read dozens of books set in New Jersey just out of my own personal bias. So I feel like I am equipped to answer this kind of question. It's also a great question because of the literary history of the state, I feel like is fairly significant. You have something like F. Scott Fitzgerald's debut novel, A Side of Paradise, which takes place mostly during his time at Princeton. Then staying in the Princeton area, you have somebody like Joyce Carol Oates, who has written prolifically in pretty much any genre you can write. She's written novellas, plays, nonfiction, fiction. I think she has 58 novels published, which is just incredible. And she she's still going. She must have written three novels in the past two years alone. So she's amazing in her own right. Then we have something like Judy Bloom, even, who is... There was just a documentary last year about her. A very interesting documentary came out this year. It's called Judy Bloom Forever. And it's a way that she was able to reach children readers, but also write for young adults when very few people were writing for young adults at the time and kind of awaken a love of reading, but also a better sense of self for those readers when they were growing up and what it meant to grow up and what that entailed emotionally, the complexity of that experience, and how she was able to relate to people. Then you have also other contemporary authors. The mystery genre is alive and well in this state. When you have representatives like Janet Ivanovich, Harlan Coben, who are just major players still in the field today. What I wanted to do and how I approached it today was think about what it means to be from New Jersey or from a literary perspective perspective represents the cultural context of the state so that I can make the most of this question. I have three book recommendations for you. The first one I'm going to get into is American Pastoral by Philip Roth. Philip Roth, who passed away a few years ago, is very well known as a Newark-based writer. I believe Newark Public Library has all of his manuscripts, papers, and everything like that massive repository of all his manuscripts. So that is a wonderful way to preserve the works and really the asides, the jottings of such an unequivocally American and also New Jersey-based writer. Roth was really fixated on American identity in the 20th century, how we arrived at it, what it meant for us as citizens of the United States to be living through these times. And so his lens in this book for getting to that is we see a character known as the Swede. He's a hard worker, a legendary high school athlete, family man, inherits his father's glove factory in Newark, has all of these wonderful middle class traits that would make him a happy and successful person. And so throughout the book, we ease into a slow unraveling of his family life, personal psyche in ways that you know rub up against things that were happening during the late 60s early 70s so you have things like the 67 newark riots watergate scandal vietnam war happening all these things that really cast the united states in a new light 
and by drawing back these facades of the sweet's personality and his family life it kind of functions as a metaphor for what's happening in the 20th century in the united states so we have questions about global warfare prosperity by taking advantage of classes and other ethnic minorities and so you have these overlapping narratives about what's going on in his personal life what's going on in new jersey at the time and what's going on in the United States. So on three levels is a, a beautiful portrait of American ideals and society at large. The next book I wanted to talk about is Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. In terms of the musical history of our state, it's hard to write about that without writing about Bruce Springsteen. So I figured his autobiography published in 2016 was a great addition to our literary tradition as well. We really get the full overview of his life, maybe not in all the finite detail that you'd like, but he really goes from describing his upbringing in Freehold in the 50s and 60s all the way until just about the time the book was published in 2016. So in that, we get his experience living in Freehold as a young child, seeing rock music develop on a mass scale. He was really getting interested in things like that, and it really touched something in him and awoken something in him, becoming a musician, living in Asbury Park, and just staying out late, playing three shows in a night, and then going to an all-night venue and playing even more after that at some place that was just a warehouse and wasn't even fit to host rock shows, and really the incessant drive that you see in him in these early days. So you do get later moments, obviously, we go through his meteoric rise in the 70s and sustaining that from the 80s onward. But what I, I found to be the best part was just describing how he had this drive within him and how he poured all of his heart and soul into the music when he first started out and how that was the main thing that propelled him, while also setting that against Things like his relationship with his parents and how that was difficult at times. Romantic relationships that didn't work out with band members. Clarence Clemens and so many others that were in the East Street Band have cycled in and out of the East Band over the years. So you get an emotional depth to it that it goes beyond just recounting of all of these fascinating events in his life, but the emotional context behind it as well to really round out the picture with honesty humor yeah just a, a completely vivid narrative of what his life has been like until that point but it's interesting that he waited long enough till he just thought he deserved to write an autobiography he's such a candor to it that he's like i guess it, i've reached the point where it would now make sense for me to do this and i i think the book completely lives up to that standard that he set for himself the last book I wanted to talk about is The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz. Diaz won the Pulitzer for this novel, published in 2007. We have like a dual narrative set up with this book, half of it taking place in New Jersey and half of it taking place in the Dominican Republic. So in that way, while it's about our, our protagonist, Oscar, it's also a family history of his family throughout the 20th century and their time living under various dictatorships in the Dominican Republic and how that shaped the family as a whole, how it brought them closer together and why they felt the need to immigrate to New Jersey. So we see in our present narrative, we have Oscar growing up in Patterson and he is obsessed with things like science fiction, fantasy novels, and then we see him going to Rutgers, but throughout the novel in the past and present sections, there are moments with his family where they do seem subject to some type of curse in a way. So it's really riveting to see if that's a curse or is the curse more of an excuse why they can't do certain things. Like Oscar just wants to meet a nice woman and fall in love. And part of the curse is that he feels unable to do that. So it's interesting to see these ideas of magical realism while also incorporating factual history of the Dominican Republic, of New Jersey itself. It's really like a 
an interesting combination of narratives that the author is working with. If you are interested in a protagonist who could relate to nerd subculture, things like Magic the Gathering, anime, Lord of the Rings, if that is kind of up your alley, then I think this book would definitely be for you. Please check out any of those books if, if they seem interesting to you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak about New Jersey's literary tradition because it's something I enjoy very much in my own personal reading experience. And feel free to send in a question if you'd like. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you to Melissa Hozik for editing this episode and hope to hear from you soon.